The second part is uh, um, AI for EO methodological research with showing the, um, let's say, uh, motivating example in the first one, you might think uh, we are then done. We, we can do everything with AI for you, but actually there are fundamental challenges which we need to uh, develop uh, novel solutions. For example, how to uh, bring together physics uh, domain knowledge with this kind of data-driven um, um, information um, discovery. Uh, reasoning is another topic so what I have shown today is more or less only uh, um, perceive what a kind of semantics is on the image, but there's nothing about reasoning, meaning the spatial, temporal uh, relations between semantics. For example, a car is always, or most cases are driving on a paved road. This kind of knowledge, which is very trivial to a human, but it's actually quite challenging to introduce this kind of uh, reasoning into the model. A third topic is transferability. And uh, nowadays, no matter which kind of uh, application, it's very common that we have training data of uh, region A, which is state rich, but actually the knowledge gap we want to close is region B, where we don't have any training data. So therefore, transferability is uh, super important. Another case is uh, very likely for historical reasons, we have or annotated data for sensor A, but then this is not directly uh, transferable to sensor B, which is probably a follow-up uh, sensor of the previous one. Therefore, generalizability, transferability of the models is a super important issue to be addressed. And also, uncertainty is important because we need to have the quality measure of all the output of our AI model. This means we need to be able to uh, very well quantify data uncertainty, model uncertainty. Should there be an out of distribution case, then the model should be able to tell. And uh, explainable AI important for many different domains, but also for uh, remote sensing. For example, if we are uh, interested in extreme events, Nowadays, it is easy probably to detect this kind of extreme event like fire, drought, flood from satellite data, but through explainability, basically to figure out which kind of climate variable uh, is the driver of this event is super important. Another thing is green AI. So um, nowadays, it's a quite common practice. Everyone starts to train their own model for a specific uh, application. And this involves a huge amount of annotations, then the train the model from scratch. But uh, then basically, uh, how to make this more energy efficient, labor efficient, training to be more uh, efficient, uh, it's a super important topic. And here about keywords, self-supervised learning, weekly supervised learning are super important. Also nowadays, uh, foundation model is a, a very trendy uh, topic which is aiming at um, non-generic features from big data archive, which would then in turn support uh, various downstream applications. And, but also to uh, very visionary things like quantum machine learning. So um, maybe in a, a, a dec decade or two, com uh, quantum computers will become uh, available to us, basically what kind of applications could profit from this kind of a future computing infrastructure is, of course, a super interesting topic to explore. And then last but not least, uh, ethics uh, in AI for you. So how to make sure the data we are produced are not uh, biased towards a certain uh, social group and that we are not violating um, privacy by making this data available and so on. So these are an incomplete list of fundamental challenges that we still need to address um, in um, the community. And along this uh, uh, MOOC course, you will hear, hear a dedicated module about uncertainty quantification and, and about uh, ethics. So this uh, could be of uh, great interest uh, to uh, the audience. Okay, here I just uh, show you a few kind of resource. 
which might be interesting for you guys. So uh, we have uh, uh, developed a platform which is called Hydro PML. So basically, if you go there, you will be able to get uh, uh, introduction to all possible tools that are related to physics aware machine learning uh, and supported with application examples like uh, flood modeling and forecast. So this would be a very good entry point for those who are interested in physics uh, aware machine learning, bringing model based knowledge into your machine learning model such that you will be able to uh, get a more accurate uh, forecasting and uh, get a more uh, label efficient model or whatever. So this is something probably could be of uh, interest. And also here is a, a kind of example of reasoning. So um, nowadays, it's very common that uh, you input a model and then you get a semantic segmentation results from the model, but how to involve a human in the loop? So here is rather an example of image referring. This means input an image to the deep learning model and a natural language query. Find all buildings with yard, then with the reasoning model, it is possible to give you a specific mask about what you are searching for, meaning all buildings with yard, as you see on the right. Uncertainty quantification, a bit a teaser for the uh, follow-up module. So basically in EO, there are various sources of uh, uh, kind of uncertainty. For example, uh, in the data itself, uh, in your training model, you might have uh, clean data. When you do the inference, there might be clouds. And if you look at the labels, there might be errors in the label. And uh, if you need to give an image a particular class, which is based on kind of a mixture uh, of different semantics, then there is also bias there. And also there's various source of uh, uncertainty. And also here is uh, a one kind of uh, example, right? I mentioned the uh, example that uh, you might have uh, uh, this kind of uh, local climate zones I mentioned before, but uh, how would you be 100% sure whether an area is a high-rise build or middle-rise build? So this means inherently, when you label the data, there's kind of uh, human uncertainty there. And the class definition itself is kind of ambiguous. So as you know that if you would give a one hot um, label, uh, to train a model, we always end up with an overconfident uh, machine learning model, meaning that um, actually the confidence you uh, uh, would uh, uh, see from, uh, uh, receive from the model is much higher than the frequent, how it can yield uh, accurate results. This is what you see on the left. But if we would now, instead of uh, one hot label, in include this kind of human or label uncertainty into the training process, you will end up on the right where you see the uh, confidence of the model is very well uh, calibrated. But this is a, a bit too much probably technical detail uh, with one slide. So if you're interested, I also provided the reference which is uh, on the um, uh, bottom of the slide. And another thing is uh, towards uh, green AI. Um, if you have heard about self-supervised learning, so basically uh, the whole thing is based on unlabeled data, which is a lot. In EO, we have uh, more than 100 petabytes of unlabeled data. So what you typically do is you would define a pretext task uh, uh, by yourself such that you don't need to create a model. Then you use different principles to train a model based on this uh, generated data and then with the hope that you can learn uh, gen gen general representations from the data archive. If you would do so, then you basically would be able to reduce the required number of uh, labels for a certain application. Basically, on the right, you will see that for a long trivial task, uh, when we would use uh, self-supervised learning, particularly in the uh, few short regime, and the model is able to uh, achieve uh, a, a good performance uh, even with less than 1% of the sample. So this is uh, basically the benefit of self-supervised learning. 
and to extend a little bit more, then it's more the foundation models, which is uh, a kind of uh, uh, model pre-trained with uh, um, huge amount of uh, data via self-supervised learning, which are supposed to be task agnostic, meaning that the learned feature can actually support various of uh, kind of downstream tasks. So on the screen, you can see that this is in our idea what could be a kind of ideal uh, Earth and climate foundation model would look like. Basically, it can uh, cope with uh, uh, various multi-sensory, multi-resolution data, let it be radar, optical, point cloud, text data, or meteorological data. And then you learn the feature view your foundation model. And then after a, a kind of a parameter efficient fine tuning, it will be able to support uh, various uh, downstream applications. Here is just an example of a Wi-Fi, permafrost, uh, tropical cyclone, and so on. And in the whole process, we should uh, try to ensure the physical consistency, meaning that um, uh, some physical, uh, basic physical laws should be uh, taken into account. Also, basically, in the whole process, there should be an interplay of Earth observation, climate foundation model, and the weather condition model, which are addressing completely different spatial detail and also the time span. And in the end, such a foundational model should also be able to interact with humans via uh, large language models. So this is just a visionary of how this kind of a foundation model would look like. And should these kind of things being available, then we are able to do, uh, let's say, much more carbon-minimized uh, Earth observation with uh, AI. Um, and uh, also a bit teaser about uh, ethics in AI for EO. So uh, uh, similar to other domains like uh, computer vision or robotics, and basically in the Earth observation, through the availability of big data and these powerful models, we are making um, a lot of unprecedented geo-information available. Um, of course, uh, there are a lot of uh, ethic uh, considerations or opportunities around. So we have to cope with the principles that we don't have a bias when we prepare the training data. Uh, when we open source the data, we should not violate the uh, data privacy. When we make data available, then it should not bring any kind of a social or disadvantage uh, to people. It should also uh, be uh, uh, somehow considered uh, with uh, potential dual use and so on. So on the right, you basically you see a kind of uh, summary or kind of guidance we have provided uh, for the community uh, for those who are uh, more having a technical background. It definitely was to pay a read in order to also get the, uh, let's say, higher level ethic uh, uh, guidance, which is a bit difficult uh, uh, to be understood by the technical people. Uh, this kind of uh, uh, guidance would give you um, basically a um, kind of access.